The biggest battle in U.S. Army history was the 1918 Meuse-Argonne Offensive. This World War I battle is rarely mentioned in our media and school history books. Once a million American draftees were assembled for combat in France, they were ordered to charge into the strongest German positions, resulting in 26,277 American soldiers slaughtered in just 47 days. These Yanks were nearly all draftees who served under the threat of imprisonment and had no desire to die as political pawns. Their deaths were the result of America's worst foreign policy blunder. Bankers had loaned Great Britain and France more money than they could ever repay. However, if Germany lost, they could demand the Germans pay massive reparations to help pay back these loans. These bankers sabotaged German peace overtures in 1916 and manipulated American politicians and media to approve American intervention that prolonged the war. See the short documentary linked below for details. Only 73,000 Americans volunteered for service during the first six weeks after Congress declared war. This led to the Selective Service Act of 1917. The war was unpopular, and 350,000 draftees never reported for service. The U.S. Army conducted so-called slacker raids to round up draft dodgers, pictured, and 10,000 men had been arrested by the summer of 1918. Anti-war protests prompted Wilson to censor the U.S. mail by blocking anti-war newsletters and magazines, and he threw thousands of draft dodgers and political opponents in jail where many died and where some remained in prison until 1933. While the U.S. Army mobilized for war by drafting and training 2.8 million men, the war in France remained stalemated. Britain refused to discuss peace with the Germans, while the French refused to attack. More than one million French soldiers had been killed in fighting by early 1917. The great 1957 film, Paths of Glory, describes the French experience and includes a great battle scene linked below. The film was so accurate that it was banned in France for 18 years and not allowed to be shown at U.S. military bases. Horrific casualties had weakened the French army so badly that numerous mutinies took place as units refused to attack. French General Philippe Pertin was forced to respond. He promised no more suicidal attacks, provided rest for exhausted units, home leave, and less discipline. Because of the mutinies, the French high command was reluctant to initiate another major offensive. Petain's strategy in late 1917 was to wait for the deployment of the American Expeditionary Force, known as the AEF. He had the support of French Prime Minister Clumetou, who told President Woodrow Wilson in June 1917 that France planned to, quote, Wait for the Americans and meanwhile not lose more men. Senior American officers had combat experience chasing Indians, Filipinos, and Mexican rebels. They had no direct experience with massive operations against a modern enemy. The AEF was led by American General John J. Pershing, pictured. As a captain, he married the daughter of a powerful senator, so in 1906, the president promoted Pershing three ranks, from captain to brigadier general. By 1917, Pershing was a full general in France, promising that American infantry would soon defeat the Germans. Pershing demanded that units advance rapidly with mass frontal assaults, resulting in 559 Americans killed each day during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. While Americans fought bravely, Thousands of American officers refused to lead repeated suicidal attacks and were relieved of command. The U.S. Army struggled to care for the 69,000 GIs wounded in just 47 days of combat and to bury the 26,277 Americans killed. The Americans overwhelmed the Germans, who were outnumbered three to one. The Germans lacked the manpower to hold the line, so agreed to a punitive armistice 
and to withdraw back to Germany. But the fighting was not over. Pershing ordered his troops to continue attacking after the armistice was agreed to because the ceasefire would not take effect for two days. Most American generals ignored Pershing's demand to keep attacking, but ambitious generals launched major attacks. On November 11, 1918, Armistice Day, the Americans suffered more than 3,500 casualties, although it had been known for two days that fighting would end that day. The U.S. Army's 313th Infantry Regiment launched an attack at 9.30 that morning to capture the town of Villa de Vent Chaton. The regimental commander had told his men to halt during the last hours, only to have his order countermanded. With 40 minutes left in the war, troops were ordered to, quote, advance at once, and suffered 461 casualties that morning, including 66 killed. Major General Charles Summerall was Pershing's 5th Corps commander. He ordered the Army's 89th Division and the Marine Corps' 5th Regiment to conduct a dangerous river crossing on the morning of November 11th. They suffered 1,100 casualties until the ceasefire took effect at 11 a.m. when German troops began to withdraw. Congress received hundreds of letters about the 3,500 casualties suffered the morning of November 11th and held hearings. Details are linked below. Army generals made excuses, but no one was even reprimanded. Ruthless General Summerall was twice promoted and became Chief of Staff of the Army from 1926 to 1930. The AEF was victorious in the musk argonne Offensive but sacrificed thousands of soldiers, wasted billions of dollars, destroyed much of France, killed and maimed thousands of people, and left Europe worse off.